So we give the stage to Stefan Peter, who I'm really happy to, to introduce. Um, we have collaborated in COT for such a long time, like what is maybe 12 years ago, we did the first thing, so. Even more, maybe. Maybe, yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to pretend we are. Uh, so please, Stefan. Okay, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, how much time do I have? When is lunch? When is lunch? 1.30? Yeah, like 30 minutes. Okay. Minutes. Okay. Hello, everyone, and also the participants online. So my name is Stefan Peter. I work as a teacher for mathematics in Jena at the University of Applied Sciences. And for the last almost three years, Peter Dittrich gave me the chance to work in his research group at University of Vienna about chemical organization theory. And we analyzed reaction diffusion systems and applied uh, COT chemical organization theory to virus infection dynamics. Yeah, okay. So I will start with a trick. <laughs> No, it's not in the physical. Uh, so the page. I will move the. Ah, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, I think we can skip it. So here you have an example illustration for virus infection dynamics. Uh, you have to read it from left to the right. So on the left. The state number one is a healthy person only containing healthy cells. And the second state, there um, is a viral infection beginning in this organism. And then in the third state, there is an immune response, the green colored cells. And Finally, the organism moves to one state, maybe the infection um, is terminated and only immune response in healthy cells are less, uh, are, yeah, remain. And here, uh, state which is not very nice, I guess, um, there are infected cells, but no immune response. Okay, and those scenarios we can model with some mathematics. So here you have an example for influenza um, infection dynamics. It's from Handel and it contains um, seven species. And we uh, colored them with three colors, blue for healthy uninfected, cells, red for infected cells or virus, and green for parts of the immune system. And we have some reactions. We have talked uh, today a lot about reaction networks. There are 12 reactions and one can compute a stoichiometric matrix from these reactions. And finally, we can compute the organizations, which are subsets of species, which have uh, two properties. First, uh, an organization is closed, no new species are produced. And second, uh, an organization is self-maintaining. And this is what Thomas already uh, said. The, there is a flux vector I called it V, which multiplied with the stock stoichiometric matrix N gives a process which, for which all species in the organization are uh, pertained, they are not consumed. Okay, and here we have a diagram, it's called Hasse diagram of organizations for our uh, model for the influenza dynamics. It contains how many organizations? Five. 
at the bottom the empty set and then the organization O2 um, containing only healthy uninfected cells. Here is an organization with only immune response. It's not very representative. But yeah, for example, this one is interesting, containing all species. So infection and immune response. Yeah, and one can model such infections dynamically with ODEs. For each species, the change in time is described by a single ODE, and each semant, each term in an ODE represents one reaction of the reaction network. And the general form is here at the bottom. For example, this reaction um, uh, B times U times V. It consumes uh, uninfected cells. That's why there is minus. Can you see? It? Yeah. And it produces latently infected cells, E. Yeah. That's why here is a plus. So when uninfected cells and virus come together, uh, uninfected cells are consumed or shifting to uh, latently infected cells. Yeah, and the dynamics, they can look like this. We split the dynamics in time. Horizontal axis is time. We split the dynamics uh, in two diagrams because there are so many species. Three species are at the top diagram and four are at the lower one. So at the beginning time minus 20, we have only healthy cells. And then we injected viruses at time zero and then the whole system reacted and produced latently infected cells productively infected cells immune response finally also adaptive immune response and yeah in the end the infection uh, was erased and only a part of the immune response um, was was persisting it uh, the innate immune response yeah this is a final state only containing uh, uninfected cells and innate immune response and we find a state here which organization is it if only uninfected cells and uh, immune response are left it's organization o4 yeah and in which organization did we start? In this one, O2, only uninfected cells. And during the course of time, we went to O5, all species were present, and then we uh, fell back to down towards O4. And this dynamics can be visualized, of course, here in the Hasse diagram. First, we added a virus, the whole system responded with immune response and so on. And then the, yeah, it's a. Uh, was O5 self maintaining then? It was not self maintaining, so we fell down to O4. No, O5 is self maintaining, but in this concrete, uh, in this example, it uh, didn't persist. So that that's what Thomas said. O5 has the potential to uh, be self maintaining, but not. Every dynamic, uh, the initial condition allow for persistence of this uh, organization. And in this case, it yeah, vanishes. So it means it never got into an attractor. Mm -hmm. we, we approach an attractor, but it's here in this in 04, not in 05. And one other question. Yeah. So what, what happens with dead cells? So dead cells also die out in this uh, simulation here. They are, they are, there's maybe an outflow. Yes, here. Yeah. This okay. reaction represents an outflow of dead cells. The body yeah, has outflows. And so yeah. because I would have assumed that that would be an organization as well. So when the virus ultimately kills you, you are all dead cells and they stay there. Um, Maybe there is a maybe there is a little bit of a misunderstanding. 
you know, maybe there is a little bit of a misunderstanding because mm -hmm. while all attractors uh, are inside organizations, not all organizations uh, create attractors. Sorry, Stefan, yes, uh, I'll let you continue. That's true. Not all organizations necessarily um, generate attractors for any um, dynamics, okay. but every attractor, this is what comes now, is within an organization for yeah. many types of dynamic yeah, yeah, systems. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that's important. Not all organizations are affected, but all affected are yeah. organizations. Yeah. So. But in, in the linear algebra um, terms, all organizations have the potential to create attractors. So you could say all organizations fight their decay, but not all organizations will this fight. Oh, decay. <laughs> yeah, they have the potential to fight yeah, yeah, the decay. Everyone yeah. fights it, but not everyone wins it. Well, yeah. I think that, that, that that's not the resilience. The resilience is this ability to fight uh, against mm -hmm. anything that pushes it mm -hmm. away from the organization. And most organizations probably are not very good at fighting in that respect. Yeah, that's a question. How uh, how good are they in fighting yeah. that so far we have not considered? Uh, sorry, I, mm -hmm. I, I would understand um, your answer to your question. Uh, if, uh, if, if, if you just take one time cycle and then it will reproduce itself. So they are sustainable in one time cycle. But in this case, if you do the limit of many cycles, in goes to infinity, yeah. Uh, you end up with uh, for organization four, yeah, so, which is the attractor, yeah. So, so I, I think one should differentiate between uh, one time situation and uh, and the limit situation, yeah, yeah of is, course, yeah, that's very important, and that is what we did. Mm -hmm. We here look at the uh, initial state and the course of time. And uh, at what we focus in our further work is the case of time goes towards infinity. Clarification mm -hmm. question. The first time that I see this word, and so I'm a bit lost about organization. So, what, how is an organization defined if I was supposing that the organization is, is a system that is self maintained and closed? But it is the case. Yeah, it is a case for all five organizations here. You can calculate it. With, yeah. Here you can show this for you X. Okay. 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 So. But it can happen that that iteration really can be a, a multiple, I several see. steps. So I that's see. why the process mm -hmm. that I was defining. It's within a time interval, which is not it's not instantaneous. So it, it can, it's a cycle that. Okay, I could show it for UX, UX uh, that it is an organization, but uh, yeah, it's already an exercise, a small exercise. So we have to consider all reactions that work with on uh, UX or both of them, and that are which reactions are that? R one reaction one no. Two no, three no, four no, five no, six no, seven no, eight no, nine no. Um, you see, it's quite yeah. Only, <laughs> only reaction twelve. So the immune response is self-replicating. So it's producing more of itself. This is the only reaction, and this means if you have U, it it won't be consumed. It has no outflow and no reaction with X um, uh, consuming it. And X is even overproducing. Yeah. And there's no reaction producing maybe a virus from uninfected cells and immune response <laughs> and no dead cells. Dead cells are only from infected cells coming from infected cells. So yeah, that are the two properties of organization. No. Maybe to, to, to clarify what he was saying, if I have understood it well, an organization can be theoretically self maintained, meaning there exists a state in which the, the, the organization self maintained, but that state has basin zero, which means that it is 
completely instable, so you will not believe it. It's, it's, it's better said, instead of stay, it's the process. And the process might be instantiated for a given state, depending on how you map status, states to the happening of reactions. As actual kinetics is product and constants, but there might be others. So, what so there is mean? one process for which it would be yes. self maintaining, but if that process not has zero basis yes. around it, mm -hmm. then you will not There is it. no way within the dynamics to get to it, to that process, then the process is unfeasible. That, that's the possibility mm -hmm. analysis we did. Yeah. So, in this example, we see uh, that for the organizations of one to oh four, there is not really interesting dynamics. It's only one reaction happening, and almost all dynamics only happens when O5 is present. And organization theory so far, um, yeah, might be um, quite rough or coarse brain. So all interesting dynamics happens here in this organization. Okay, I uh, will continue. I hope so. What is important here? We considered uh, ODE dynamics, so there's no space uh, models here. Everything happens at one point or in a well mixed tube or cell. Or so, what comes next? Yeah, there were two. I think this. Fixed point theory came later, but that's not important. So Peter Dittrich and uh, Pietro Disperoni, they proved the theorem one. Every fixed point is an organization. So a fixed point is a special type of attractor. And in 2011, we published a work that uh, contained theorem two. Every attractor consisting of a single subset of species is always an organization and such attractors can be very manifold they can be fixed points they can be cycles as uh, francis has shown they can be chaotic attractors or even strange attractors there are many types of attractors in mathematics so that we uh, prove but we did not we could not prove the following situation. There we were kind of lost. Uh, many systems, or not many, but there's a whole class of systems, like for example, heteroclinic orbits. They exhibit several um, subsets of species in their long-term behavior. Here is an example. This diagram, uh, it, it starts at maybe time 600. So the system is already running quite some time and, ex and it exhibits a periodic behavior. At the beginning, the species, the subset S1 and S2 is present. Then S2 um, decays, almost all of it, and only S1 remains. Then S3 is... Um, is produced and S1 is, uh, yeah, is vanishing and so on. And here one cycle uh, is um, ends and the next subset of species would be this first again. Yeah? And what's interesting, uh, the, the subsets of species S1, S3 and S2 with only one species, they are, um, they have um sojourn times uh, tending towards infinity so the system remains there always longer and uh, there's a nicer uh, picture here so the system runs in this triangle and it stays here for every each time it stays longer here but the passage from here to there is with constant speed and so it travels, and in the Hasse diagram of organization, this, this journey looks like this. So this system, in, um, when uh, time goes towards infinity, shows several subsets of species. And we could not prove uh, that all of them are organizations or all together are organizations. 
So this was, yeah. So and yeah, this is kind of distribution of species. They are distributed temporarily in time. So they are, yeah. One time you have this, then you observe this and this. Yeah. This is very fascinating. I mean, yeah, there should be some kind of memory uh, inside the system, residing inside the system. Yeah, some species are always left. So here there is. Ah, so, yeah, so this yeah. is the memory. Yeah, this is the memory. The question whether this is realistic but or not is because it's, it's continuous dynamics. Mm. Yeah, of course. Oh. Yeah. But maybe there can also be perturbations from outside, yes. always putting some of those species again inside the system and producing this. So we didn't understand, understand this quite well and turned towards even more complex systems, more complicated systems, reaction diffusion systems, which have a, um, a space variable. So there we have the change the der derivative uh, over time and also over uh, x the space variable so now the systems can be um, extended in space and this is a diffusion term so here we have three uh, partial differential equations not odas anymore but pdes here's the general form and we have the reactional part we already know and a new diffusion part so Dimensional space. Yeah. Right. So here it's one dimension, but it one can be ah, um, space, time, but the space dimension can be three dimensional. Ah, you can in, make it in a, in a line. In a line, ah. in a surface, or in a three yeah, dimensional space. Here it's one dimension, one dimension as you must see. Two species living in a stream, let's say. Yeah, yeah, yeah on yeah. a line. Yeah. And we here we see dynamics yeah uh, I will quickly look. okay um, you could you could focus here on this uh, diagram on the lower right after a long time so this is the system's long-term behavior we have on the left side we have species s2 it can't diffuse on the right side we have s1 it also can't diffuse at the beginning, both of these species were also in the other part, but they destroyed each other. Only species S1 can diffuse, it's produced here and consumed here. And uh, yeah, that's why the concentration here is a bit higher than here. So this is the X axis, the position in space. And yeah, after a long time, the system comes to this fixed point. And this is not an organization. F, S1, S2, F, S3 together are not in the Hasse diagram of organizations. This is a Hasse diagram and it looks a, a bit um, not very nice, not very symmetric. Um, if it were symmetric, we could call it a lattice, but it's only a Hasse diagram. So they are missing some yeah, subsets of species. And the one we observe here in the long term behavior is not contained. And that's a problem. If we say we want to describe the long-term behavior with organizations, this example, also as the example before, um, yeah, shows long-term behavior not fitting with an organization. And we um, we ask ourselves, what do we have to change to um, yeah to say organizations describe the long-term behavior of every reaction diffusion system. By the way, it's not restricted to mass action kinetics, but to many types of kinetics, continuous kinetics. And here's the main result. Um, we define distributed organizations, and that are organizations uh, which are a bit generalized. And we also had to find a, a nice uh, persistence, definition of persistence. The idea of the proof is simply double integration over time and space. It's, the proof is quite long. And, but this is our main result. Uh, the set of persistent species of every uh, reaction diffusion system, including ODEs also, is always a distributed organization, DO, you say. Yeah. 
And yeah, that would take too much time to explain the details uh, of our concept of persistence. Um, what was interesting, our new concept of persistence is um, lies in between classical concepts of persistence. So this is a strong classical definition of persistence uh, using Limes, Limes inferior definition. This is stronger than our concept in the middle. And there's also a classical concept of persistence which is weaker than our one. And yeah, maybe I will go on to show you here. This is a lattice, totally uh, symmetric. Each two sets, two uh, that's a, that are organizations, so white boxes and the gray boxes are new distributed organizations. And this system we have simulated is here in this DO. So we see the DOs always capture the long-term behavior, also in this example. And we have that we have also proven that it is always a lattice. This is a nice algebraic result, and maybe it facilitates the computation of DOs. Yeah, and also this example here. Um, yeah, we find with our theory uh, all these um, subsets of species are. Uh, together are a DO and all they are persistent. But for example, the subset containing all three species is not persistent. Not persistent. If you wait long enough, you won't find a moment when all three species are in the cell or in the reactor. Yeah, and here we extended the system a bit to give a nice example of persistence. Yeah. Maybe it will One take too much time if we, yeah. Just a, a short uh, update. We will not uh, have either in the morning session. We will just reschedule for the afternoon because we have to go for lunch, but lunch will be served in two minutes. So we have a few minutes to okay. discuss and so on. Okay, yes. We will have to eat a little faster than expected. <laughs> okay, I will also try to yeah. be fast. Okay, here this is important. Contrary to organizations, the O's may consist of several subsets of species, not only one, yeah. each of which is closed. This is very similar to your work, and together they are self-maintaining. But together, um, but only if they are uh, distributed, either in time or in space, uh -huh. or by a membrane. Yeah. But this allows for cooperation of subsets of species which are maybe together not closed. They would produce new, but distributed, they are closed. And also self-maintenance uh, might only work if they are distributed. If they come together, then together, they could uh, destroy each other. So, yeah. So it allows for, maybe it allows for many applications in ecology and biochemistry. This is what we have to find out. <clears throat> so it's a generalization of organizations, but it includes organizations, this DO concept. Here we have an example of, a, of quite a complex analysis of COVID uh, dynamics, uh, COVID infection dynamics. This we, yeah. I don't know whether I should, maybe it takes too much time now. Yeah, we have analyzed many COVID infection uh, models and found that they are very different. And uh, they, are, they are a bit contradictory also. They are not, yeah, they are models which assume the persistence of infection and healthy cells. Other models assume the destruction of any infection. And yeah, maybe this tool would help the future model development. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. You said what the distributed organization is? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
uh, only in words, not not in here. Maybe you should say what a dissident organization actually is. So how do you recognize a dissident organization? So maybe you can say it. <laughs> <laughs> so you check me now whether he is more a teacher. Or he... <laughs> okay, so I will try. So okay. if you have a dissident organization, you can okay, I will also read all the stuff. <laughs> you can separate it into subsets. Each subset must be closed. So the subsets are not allowed to create something new. And together they should be self-maintaining, which means that they can exchange by diffusion, let's say, by diffusion molecules in order to maintain themselves as a, together. And this exchange is selective. So not everything should is necessary to be exchanged. Only something, some species can be exchanged. So again, so if I'm able to separate my organization into subsets that are closed, and I allow, I allow some diffusion among the subsets, the whole system must be able to self-maintain itself. Yeah. And the important aspect is that those things that diffuse must necessarily be at least those that are lacking the closest um, fragments. Yeah, yeah. Because you have the you have the whole system, which is not going to be interacting all together, but distributed into closed sets. Mm -hmm. This closed set in isolation might not be self-maintaining because it needs something. Its productive process is not compensating. This other is compensating for another. So this one is going to give what the other is needing to survive, and this one is giving to the other what is needed to survive, or something more complex than that, some sort of cooperation. Yeah. So, yeah. so otherwise, because if, if <coughs> new reactions created within the whole set, the whole thing, it could survive as an organization. So, in order to be a distributed mm -hmm. organization, which is not an organization, you need to separate them into groups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because if you put them together, there must yeah. be some problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they still survive, so they might still inter uh, yeah. at least exchange what the others need. Yeah. So, yeah. And this is exactly what yeah. membranes do. They let some uh, molecules diffuse and only in some directions yeah. and others not. And you even don't need time or space to separate. It's only a function. Different yeah. cells have different function, but they cooperate and all this uh, processes one could model quite nice. I think, um, you, uh, when you think of molecular genetics, so what uh, the recent like 20 years uh, have uh, researched is that the spatial organization of the nucleus is so important for the gene expression to regulate it, but uh, there there is no membrane. So I think uh, in that case also organizations could really uh, take a role in gene expression. The problem is they are not easier to compute than <laughs> organizations <laughs> because they are a generalization and it's really not that but easy as it seems. It, we, I, I, would, I would suggest to, to think, uh, to go back to the idea of what are the relevant distributed organizations. Because mm -hmm. still the, the, the notion is quite general. And for example, if you have one module that is not reactive and the other module, module is totally reactive or not, it doesn't work non reactive. But again, the reactive one module might concentrate a lot of non reactive species, right? For example, and only has some internal autocatalytic dynamics that feeds the other group, which needs that autocatalytic thing and the other thing survives. Mm -hmm. So this part here, having non reactive species, might in principle produce a lot of other distributed organizations, which only consider parts of those, so there might be still some exponential pruning. To, to yeah, I, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I believe too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we were um, briefly discussing the other day. And there is one student I mentioned this. Uh, he was, mm -hmm. There is one master's student working on this problem. Lives. 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 No, he's he's he's, doing, he's master. Master. Yeah, he's master student. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. more, more well, questions? I wanted to uh, introduce some sort of filter here. It's in the fields, this one you can't put them together. So, mm -hmm. the, the, you would say the distributed organization is 
when there is yeah. interference and that you can't have a single organization, yeah. but still there is self maintenance line in diffusion. Mm -hmm. And I also put maybe an example of uh, separation in time that I can imagine that in the cell that certain uh, genes are activated to produce certain enzymes in a particular condition, so that these enzymes, if they stay in the cell, would interfere with things that need to happen at a later moment. So it may well be that the cells also in time have this kind of rule that these things can be active, but then they need to disappear before the other things can get active. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, for example, the seasons in nature show show this. Yeah. They only work because they are um, yeah after each other and repeat it. Yeah, yeah, yeah in, in, in ecosystems you also have that in yeah. ecosystems you not only have that separation in space, but also separation in season. There are certain flowers that only appear in in spring when the temperatures yeah. are warm enough not to have uh, uh, snow. But there's still enough light because the trees don't yet have uh, leaves, and they can only survive in that moment in time. But then, the moment that the trees start to grow leaves, they interfere with the flowers, and the flowers disappear until the next thing. Mm. Yeah, so uh, the sense of fear is the same uh, like you already said, so it's pre preventing synergies that prohibit uh, separate things. So uh, that would be an interesting thing to check uh, which synergies are good, yeah. but maybe some <coughs> synergies are bad. So of course, I thought the synergy is good yeah, for yeah. complexity, but uh, maybe in some cases, synergies <laughs> are bad for the systems. Yeah, or you can introduce a, a toxic resilient component to the system that no matter what you do is going to destroy it anyway. So these are normative, these are not uh, moral concepts. You to try to <laughs> stay like, away from yeah, them. I mean, the yeah, sense of uh, more complex things. Yes. Uh, benefiting the no, it's a, um, And one more thing that I want to just bring on the table, Carl, you have something? Yeah, yeah, please, please go on. Just, just, a, just a thought or an extra idea, which is maybe totally unrelated, but, but maybe probably some, somebody has to have it. It's the notion of completeness. Completeness can do many things, but in my, uh, other things it can also be computational in the sense of uh, during what you need. And uh, in there, you have this idea that you build up a universe of computable functions, and uh, and there you have uh, and, and, and you have a already a very very worked out uh, situation there. Uh, so, the, but for instance, when von Neumann had this idea of cell reproduction with the cellular automata, he had the additional idea in mind that these structures that cells produce should also be able to universally compute. Mm -hmm. yeah? so, so computation and completeness with regards to computation is a, is a very important uh, notion that also could be looked at. It's yeah. just a, a brainstorming mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. You, you have done, Peter, some work on, on computing with clinical organizations. So this yeah, I did this, but also Jeff Wolf, yeah. uh, the guy. He, um, I don't know whether he can now <laughs> listen, uh, whether he can hear me now. So he used as molecules combinators. Maybe you know that from computation theory. Yeah. Combinator is like lambda calculus. Ah, okay. So it's just combinator. It's more easy to maybe to handle, but it's also computationally complete. And then you can make an experiment running these combinators, which are computer programs essentially. You can run them in the chemistry. And then he saw that you, this unfolds sometimes in the universal yes. chemistry where everything is there that makes it universal. It, it needs very little. It right. Very little. right. So it was very easy. That was also one argument of it to say it's in a way boring from a natural science point of view yeah. because it's very easy to generate the whole universe. Yeah. But also sometimes you lost some of the combinators so that it does not become universal. Mm -hmm. So at least with this kind of system, you have then this universal and not, but Universality was very easy to achieve. Yeah, so just as a note, so so you can do that, and you can also do it with lambda calculus. Also, so Fontana did it with lambda calculus. Ah, so Fontana, I, yes, I, I started with Fontana. Yes, 
Yes, and he used the lambda calculus yes. as molecules. Yes. And they are also very easy. You can make them universal, but also you have this emergence of self replicators, and then you just identity function. Yeah, and this doesn't unfold to the whole universe. But, 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 but once you have universality, computation yes. universality, you can have a very varied structure of possibilities. Just, yes. just to mention uh, the, the PC people function. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, can, it explodes beyond yes. any computer. Yes. Yes. And so on. So that, that's very fascinating. Yeah. And in theory, of course, when your, your molecules are universal, you have all kind of universes are inside the chemistry yes. somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, computer, it's, it's, computer it's, no, no, it's, it's not strange because yeah. you can build yeah. uh, a new universal computer with uh, yeah. with uh, with uh, yeah. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. yeah, so of course, this is an indication of, of how good the workshop is running. We cannot stop talking. This is great. And we're going to move for, for lunch now, lunch session. And it's now CET time. It's one. So we will have a, an hour and then 15 minutes for a coffee. So we meet back here at 2.30. Mm -hmm. And those that we will have to squeeze a little bit the, the presentations of Marta mm -hmm. and Evo and a little bit Peter, mm -hmm. if possible. If not, we just extend and don't have much, much discussion session and we end up with talks. Mm -hmm. So, so, so yeah. we are adding one additional presentation for, for, compared to the program. Um, uh, no, no, we, 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 we already did that, which was Stefan Peter. Yes. Okay. Okay. yes. Okay. So, uh, stop sharing and stop recording. So, see you, uh, audience, uh, online audience. We meet again 